And that's pretty much it. Those are all the different parts of the mini sewing machine that you need to know in order to start sewing. Hi everyone, welcome to Unicrafts. If you are a crafter who owns a mini sewing machine and if you like helping your planet, you've come to the right place because Unicrafts is a craft and home improvement channel committed to donating a percentage of all ad revenue to charities of your choice. For more details, please click on the About section of Unicrafts and check out the channel banner for all the charities that you have helped raise money for. So by the end of this video, if you are an absolute beginner at sewing, you will leave knowing exactly what all the different parts of your mini sewing machine are and what they do. Let's get into it. So here in front of you are two different mini sewing machines. Um, there are just very slight design differences between the two, but essentially they're one and the same things. I'm going to walk you through both of them anyway, just in case you've got different styles um, at home. When you buy a mini sewing machine and bring it home and open the box, straight out of the box, you will have three things which are definitely included in your box. The first one is going to be your main mini sewing machine in itself or the main body of the mini sewing machine. Other than that, the two other things you should have in the box are the foot pedal and the power cable or the power plug. Some mini sewing machines, however, also come with a fourth big component, which is the extension table, which is this device sitting right next to it. Now I'm going to walk you through systematically each and every part so you know exactly what everything does. So let's start with the very basic thing, which is the power cable. So I live in England or the United Kingdom and here on the wall, we've got three pin power sockets. So the electric cable that came with my machine has got a three pin plug, as you can see here. Okay, it's got three prongs and that will suit my power socket. If you live in Europe or somewhere else, the mini sewing machines available in your market should come with power adapters suitable for your power sockets. Okay, so that's the very first thing. Now, the other end of the power cable is going to contain this kind of a connection. I don't know what it's called, uh, but this is going to be connected into the main body of the mini sewing machine. So I'm gonna just pick one up and show you where it goes. On the side of it, underneath this big purple circle are going to be two little pluggy things, okay? And it will contain a label saying DC or power in. And this is going to go right in there in the lower hole, okay? Now let's try that with the other mini sewing machine as well. So this one's got a slightly different design as you can see. And if I turn it around on the side again, you can see it's the lower hole where the power cable goes in. And that is how you're going to connect your mini sewing machine to the power supply. So that is your power adapter sorted, which is this little guy. Let's move on. The second thing that your mini sewing machine is gonna come with is the foot pedal. And it's called the foot pedal because it literally is a pedal that you put your foot on. So there it is, that's what it looks like. Okay, and if I press it down with my hands, you will see there's movement. And you basically bung it underneath your table when you're sitting on a chair and you put your foot on and you press it, okay? And it's got a long cable as well. The longer the better, because then you can place your machine on a taller table as well. And here, as you can see, there, that's got a male lead end and that is going to again go on the side of your mini sewing machine and here it's got a very clear label which says foot pedal. That's where it's gonna go. Got it? Now let me take it out and demonstrate the same thing to you with the other mini sewing machine. So let's pick it up. And on the side, again, there's a label which says foot pedal and the lead is going to go straight in there. Okay, and that is how your foot pedal gets connected to the mini sewing machine. Now, the third big component uh, that you can see here is the extension table in itself. 
Now, not all mini sewing machines come with this, but I've been looking online. I think increasingly more and more sellers are providing these tables with your mini sewing machine. So that extension table actually actually came with this machine, which is my KPCB Tech Mini Sewing Machine. So let me show it to you now and let's have a look at what it looks like. So I'm gonna move these guys out of the way. There, that is your extension table. Now, if I flip it over, Underneath it, you will see some folding or moving components, and those are the legs. So we're gonna unfold the legs now. So here's the big left two legs, and then the little legs would sit on the right. That's one, and that's two. Now let me show it to you from the side, and this is what they look like, okay? And the idea really is that because the mini sewing machine's sewing surface is so tiny, this just helps to increase the surface area on which you can put your projects and sew. Now, just to save some space, uh, the manufacturers have provided a little chamber here. And if I open it, you can see that you can store some little bits there. Okay, it's not important what you store there. This one came with some bobbins inside, I think. Uh, and you just simply close it. I don't really use it much, but that's the chamber. Now, the way you attach it to your mini sewing machine, I will be covering in greater detail in a future video. But for now, I just want you to know that this is the extension table in case you were confused or worried about it. And you can simply fold the legs back in again and put it away for storage. Now, let's move on to the actual part of the mini sewing machine itself. It's very important as a beginner sewist that you know what every different part does. As it is, these are very simple, very small mini sewing machines. They do not contain all the bells and whistles of bigger machines. So for the most part, they've got very simple, very few components. So it is a good idea for you to get to know what they are. Let's start with what we can see on the front. And I've kept them side to side so that you can see the difference between the two different models and not be confused. So if I start from the right hand side, you will see the biggest thing that you can see here is this big round um, circle or this big round purple wheel, which is on the side, okay? And it's there on this one as well. There it is. And this is called the hand wheel. Now I'm not gonna show you exactly what it does right now. I'm just gonna show you how it moves. We always turn it towards ourselves and it moves like so. Why it does that, we will cover in the future video here as well. Turning it towards ourselves, it moves. Okay, that's the hand wheel. Let's move again in a straight line from the hand wheel, the first little knob that you see here, this is a bobbin holder. Now a bobbin, what's a bobbin? We will look into it in a future video because we're going right back to the basics again. But basically it's a little um, spindle. If I turn the machine over to the side, you will see there's a little spring on the back of it. And when your machine comes straight out of the box, you will find that it holds a little silver thing called a bobbin, uh, which has some thread on it. And this machine has got the exact same thing, okay? That's a spring, and that's your upper bobbin holder. Usually, when I'm sewing my projects, I really do not use these spindles at all because we can do much better by simply using other parts of the mini sewing machine, which is the top spindle. So now let me show you where the top spindle is. When you're looking at your machines from the front, right on top, you will see a little silver knob there. Here as well, there's a silver knob. And if I grab that knob and pull, a little spindle comes out here as well. A little spindle pulls out. Let's tip the machines forward and you can see what it looks like from the top. And that is a top spindle. And this is where our big thread reel can sit. So we really do not need to wind any extra bobbins and put them on here. We can directly use 
a thread reel and sit it on top here and use it, okay? Which is why I don't like using these spindles. So that is a top spindle. We can fold it back down again, like so. Now the next obvious knob, obviously, is this little purple circle that you see on both the machines. And this is the thread tension controller. So when you sew, the thread that stitches your fabric or your project together is under tension. And using this little knob, you can control how tight or how loose the thread is. If I turn it to the side, you can see that it's got two little silver plates clamped together and they sandwich the thread in between them. Again, right now I'm not going into the details of how that is done. I'm just showing you the part of the mini sewing machine. So that is your thread tension controller. Now let's look at the third most obvious purple thing on the front of our mini sewing machines, which is these buttons here. Now, on the other sewing machine, the exact same functions are present, but they are split up into two different buttons. And there's a third little button there as well that I'll just show you and how it works. So let's start here. The three different buttons here are, the top one is the light switch. So when I press it, there's a little light bulb under there, okay? And it switches on when I press it. Obviously, right now my machine is not connected, so you cannot see that, but that's what it does. Now, in this machine, the light switch is not situated here. It's actually situated right under there. There is a tiny little purple square. If I tip my machine upside down, you'll be able to see it. There it is. If I press it, that will operate the little light bulb. Okay, so that's the light switch. So are you guys with me so far? I hope what I'm saying is making sense and that I'm not confusing you even more. If you think that what I'm talking to you about is making sense, write Bobbin down below, B-O-B-B-I-N. Type that down below so I know that what I'm saying is making sense and that your mini sewing machine is no longer such a mystery to you. <laughs> Next, let's move on to the main on-off switch. So that is the main on-off switch. If I press it, the machine is going to run or sew. And if I press it again, it's going to stop sewing. The same goes on the other sewing machine, but it's a different button. It's right here and it clearly says on and off. So the lower position, the pressed position, that's on and that's off. In the third position on this machine, it's a different button. And here it says H and L. H means high, L is for low. So if I press it, the machine is going to sew at a lower speed, which is easy to control. If I press it again and the button pops out, now the machine is going to sew at a faster speed, which is a little more challenging to control. The same button on this machine is present here. And again, on the lower position, it says L for low, higher position H for high. So that's high, the button has popped out. That's low speed, the button is back in again. Now here you can see the back of the mini sewing machines and you can again see a purple component, which is here. It's a little plastic purple lever. Now this is the presser foot take up lever. And when I lift it up, a little silver presser foot goes up here. If I lower it, that silver presser foot goes down. Similarly here, lift, it goes up. Keep an eye on this thing. We lower and it goes down. So that is a presser foot lever, which brings us to the presser foot. So let's flip the machines over again. Now, that little silver thing at the bottom is called the presser foot. It's like, like a two-pronged foot. And if I lift it up, you can see it more clearly. That two-pronged thing which wobbles up and down, that's the presser foot. 
it presses your cloth or your fabric down as you sew. It's identical on the other sewing machine. There it is, and if I lift it up, there it is. It's a little more stiff on this one, but it's the same presser foot. And since you're talking about levers, let me show you one more lever, which is called the thread take-up lever. And it is this silver component right there and right there as well. So remember the hand wheel. When I turn the hand wheel towards myself, you will see this move. Goes up and down. And that is why it's called the take-up lever or the thread take-up lever because it helps to pull the thread up and out of the bobbin casing uh, when we sew. And we're going to come to that in a moment. That's your thread take-up lever. Now let's look at the actual needle that sews your project and it is situated right there, right above the presser foot. So if I switch it to the side, here you can see in front of my fingers a little silver needle. That is your sewing needle, okay? And here as well. There it is. I hope you can see it. There it is. That's your needle which will sew the actual project. And since we are looking at the needle, we also need to look at the mechanism that operates how we change the needle. See that? that silver screw here as well that silver screw that screw controls the insertion and fixing of the needle so when i unscrew that the needle i just showed you is going to come away and then you can reinsert another needle so that is there now let's look at one more hidden component of the mini sewing machine which is the bobbin winding spindle. So if I turn my mini sewing machine to the side and here as you can see is the hand wheel. In the middle of the hand wheel there is another little circle and it's actually a pop out spindle. So it's got little arrows there. So what it means is I press it and I twist it following the arrows and the spindle pops out. Do you see? It's got a spring-loaded spring system on the back of it and basically you use it to wind a bobbin. Again, we're not going back into the details of how to do that right now. We will do that in a future video. But to put it back in again, you just go against the directions of the arrow. So I press it and I turn it and it's popped right back in again. Let's try it on the other machine. Press and turn. It's popped out, spring-loaded mechanism, press, turn, it's gone back in again. So that is the bobbin winding spindle. If I turn the machine over to the side, here you will see a little scissors symbol. And it's actually this plastic bit on the side of it, I hope you can see it, there's a tiny, tiny little blade. Once you finish sewing, you can simply snip the thread off using that little blade and you won't have to get any other extra scissors to do so. The same thing is here. That is your scissors symbol because that's where the thread cutter is. It's a tiny blade right back there, okay? Now let's look at a very, very, very important part of the mini sewing machine, which is a bobbin chamber. So if I turn the sewing machine, you can see this big black component and it actually slides open. It's a lid. That black thing is a lid and inside it, it houses the bobbin. That silver circle is called a bobbin and that is where the lower thread of your project sits. So that is a bobbin chamber. It's super important for you to know where it is, how to open it, how to use it. We will cover that in a future video as well. And let's look at it on the other sewing machine. There it is. Open it. There is a little shiny silver bobbin and we close it. Now let me show you one more component which is common to both the sewing machines, which is the battery chamber. Now the manufacturers of these mini sewing machines say that you can use these sewing machines using just batteries. So you can kind of 
take them around with you. They're perfectly portable. And if you flip it on the underside, you will see there is a giant chamber. If I open it, I hope I can. There, there is a bobbin chamber and it shows you that you have to put in four um, AA batteries to be able to use it. Personally, I've never used the mini sewing machine with, bob uh, with batteries. But there you go. If that's something that's up your street, feel free to do so. Four AA batteries it's going to need because uh, sewing does take up a lot of energy. Now there is one last thing that I need to point out to you on this mini sewing machine. And the unusual thing about it is that it is present on one mini sewing machine, but it's not there on the other mini sewing machine. And that is a wraparound slot to enable you to sew circular items like sleeves or trouser trunks to hem trouser trunks um, anything of that sort and it is this slot right here now you can see it's not present on this mini sewing machine okay so this is on certain machines and not on other machines and there it is it's just a slot and you can see my hand through there what that means is if you if you were to sew something circular you could pretty much wrap it around um, this section of the sewing machine enabling you to sew all the way around it and it's there um, it goes from front to back and you can see my hand through there that slot is not present on this machine and finally before we wind up I'm gonna show you a few little parts or a few little bits of this mini sewing machine which all perform the same thing which is there are channels for passing the thread through properly and it's these three little metal loops one, two, and three. If I show them to you from the side, it's actually just a coil made out of super stiff wire. It's got literally no flex to it anyway. And it's there so we can pass the thread through these parts. Again, we will learn all about how to do that in future videos if you've not, if you've not watched uh, previous videos on how to do that. But those are the coils of wire where we pass the thread through, okay? And that's pretty much it. Those are all the different parts of the mini sewing machine that you need to know in order to start sewing on the mini sewing machine. I do hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing because I'm putting out fresh content full of helpful tips tricks and tutorials surrounding the mini sewing machine and much more. Now for your next steps, check out the videos in the floating thumbnails because they're going to guide you about what to do next with your mini sewing machine now that you are familiar with the parts. Share the love for crafting by forwarding this video to one more friend who has no idea how to sew because it's going to make sewing appear less intimidating and more fun for that friend of yours. Thank you so much for watching today and I shall see you guys very soon. Take care guys. Bye bye.